I do think that people have to be very mindful. Um, it's not really the AI that is evil, but it's a reflection of human society and how we think. Uh, that, that is why I, I believe also that the trolley problem becomes a, such a talked about topic. Uh, like we hear about it panel after panel, but it's something so human. Do you want to elaborate on the trolley problem so, we, so everybody knows what we're talking about? Yeah. This is very interesting. Yeah, uh, so one of the most commonly asked questions uh, for any sort of AI scientist or robotics uh, scientist is about the trolley problem, which is if, uh, if a trolley has to make a decision to kill five children or kill an elderly person, how does it make the decision, like the ethical decision of which one to choose? And you know, it's a very philosophical question about human nature, and there's been lots of debates. I think we even had a lively breakfast debate about <laughs> it. And it, you know, after a lot of debate, there's no clear right or wrong answer. And I think it's something that is so, uh, it's a reflection on human judgment, human values, um, like the last speaker was talking about, and how do you rank what people value, and that changes from person to person, society to society. I mean, we, we've heard a bunch of different solutions to that problem, right? Like, I've heard a blockchain-based reputation system, which is pretty out there, but then you have the simple solution of, you know, you kind of just fill out a questionnaire, and you opt in or you opt out to one option. Yeah, because I think, it, I mean, instead of holding up um, and putting this on each individual AI company, or, you know, there's, no, there's not going to be a global solution right now, um, but you know, you might put the onus on if you were to take a um, Lyft, Grab, Taxify, whatever, self, a self-driving vehicle, um, maybe each individual person has to fill out a pretty painful questionnaire before they start about what they would choose to do, because some people might say, save me at all costs, and other people might be um, di thinking differently, and I think maybe it's up to each individual person to decide to start. I believe we're right at the start of this revolution that's happening right now, and in the next 10 to 25 years, uh, I imagine just more natural ways of communication, so it'd be more seamless. Right now, it's very explicit. You know, you tell your robot to go get a beer, you click the input into a mouse or your iPhone, and I think in the future, it'll start to be more natural where you don't, there's nonverbal communication. It starts to understand what we are thinking and so doing. So BCI. Yes, Got yeah, it, and moving BCI. more and more towards that direction. Interesting, any other predictions? Um, Self-driving cars, flying cars, all of how, that. How long? <laughs> how long do you think until most cars are self-driving? I mean, we're already at the start of small batches of self-driving cars. Uh, people just need to start seeing it in a very real, concrete way before we do mass-scale manufacturing. The problem is not manufacturing; it's no one solved the problem yet. So, so. By, by what? How long do you think it's going to be until most cars on the streets will be autonomous? Uh, for most cars on the street, I see it as a much longer game because yeah. uh, driving is so local. Uh, driving here in Dubai is very different from China. It's different than the U.S. So I think uh, we don't have global Wi-Fi yet. We don't have global Internet. Um, this is a much longer time scale of a few decades. 